You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rodriance for Black and White Sports 2. Well, Bomani Jones, who we're going to talk about here, is the exact reason and example why Black and White Sports and Black and White Sports 2 is successful. The Black and White Network starting to grow. We're well over now 200,000 subscribers across all the channels, right? And um, now we're around, right around 5 million views a month, up or down a little bit. Um, but that's growing now. It is consistently growing. And it's because of companies like Disney and ESPN rewarding people like Bomani Jones. Now, Bomani Jones has been very vocal about the fact that he hates white people. And I guess that's just fine to the Marxist ESPN of China. Um, they will reward failure, it seems. Now, one could certainly construe if they wanted to, because certainly based on a merit in production, there was no reason for Bomani Jones to get re-signed by ESPN. And we'll go over those reasons. Um, but certainly, certainly one could speculate as to why he still got his job. By the way, he's got an HBO show. The ratings are terrible there too. Okay, and I'll give you a prime example. Last week I did a video. Bomani Jones was talking 49ers, and he couldn't help himself. He could not help himself. If you were not all in on Trey Lance being the 49ers starting quarterback, it was because you were white and you were racist. And that's exactly the kind of trash takes that caused him to have the lowest rated PM ESPN radio show in the history of their company. And we'll get to some of these numbers. Now, keep in mind, they re-signed Bomani Jones. They cut Kenny Main. The next one, the next couple will make you shake your head. Mike Golick Sr., yeah, the legendary Mike Golick, Mike and Mike. Ryan Rosillo, look, I mean, we all know Rosillo would have stayed if they would have offered enough money. Come on. And he was the best thing they had on radio. Danny Cannell, gone. Both of those guys, very successful on their own now. Will Kane. Will Kane got fed up with ESPN as a whole and of their politics and left for Fox News. He's on Fox and Friends on the weekend, and he shows up during the week during a lot of their shows. It should be noted, by the way, Will Kane replaced Bomani Jones in that PM time slot on the radio. ESPN's rating skyrocketed. Do you know what Will Kane is? He's a, actually a conservative. Which is one reason why he actually left ESPN. But you get the point. I listened to Will Kane's show on ESPN in that time slot. You know what Will Kane loved to do? He loved to actually talk about sports. <laughs> Imagine that. Guess what Ryan Rosillo and Mike Gullick had in common? And Danny Cannell, they like to talk about sports. This is Bobby Burak. Talk about a kick in the nuts to all these successful ESPN personalities. ESPN said it could ill afford to keep employed. We hope radio legend Mike Gullick can one day rebound from his ousting. Hashtag white privilege. Resigning Jones proves ESPN does not serve its viewers. See, sports fans do not like Bomani Jones. We absolutely hate his guts. We do. We don't like being called racist when we're not racist. And we don't like, uh, we don't like being drug across the floor when we say, hey, just speak, uh, keep, keep it to sports, bud. They see him on air, and they quickly turn the channels. They've reminded ESPNs of their feelings during each of his promotions. The network has tried to make him a star for the better half of a decade. It's a failure. It's an utter failure. First, ESPN tried to groom him as the next Colin Cowherd, the voice of sports talk radio. But unlike Cowherd, Jones wasn't good on the radio. Per the ratings, Bomani Jones was the worst national sports radio host ever. Imagine that. By the ratings. That is not hyperbole. 
His PM radio show recorded the lowest ratings in ESPN radio history. And he lost a record 90 affiliates. I mean, what else do you need to know? The network had to cancel his program in 2017. The ratings for the time slot quickly rebounded after Will Kane replaced Jones per ESPN's own press releases. Single-handedly tanking a radio lineup would have proved career-ending for most hosts, but not for Jones. He's too privileged. Yeah, you are privileged, in fact. Following the cancellation of his program, ESPN promoted Jones to television. Former company president John Skipper had hoped TV viewers would despise Jones to the same degree as radio listeners. Unfortunately for Skipper, TV viewers hated Jones as well. In 2018, High Noon with Bomani Jones and Pablo Torre. I don't know if you guys remember that. It wasn't on very long. I remember it. Debuted at noon Eastern Time. The show followed the highly rated first take with Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, it had a great lead in. Shirley Jones couldn't fail while inheriting Stephen A.'s large audience, ESPN thought. Wrong again. It turned out Bomani Jones' race baiting did not resonate to the same degree as Stephen A's. High noon quickly set record lows in the noon time slot. Give Jones credit. Losing 60% of First Take's audience is no simple task. But ESPN wasn't ready to cancel another Jones-led program quite yet. Rather, they moved his show to 4 p.m. after three months of record low viewership. Want to guess what happened next? Correct. Bomani Jones set new lows at 4 p.m. He did so in a block with PTI, the highest rated show on ESPN. The network finally canceled High Noon in 2020, but instead of firing Jones for his repeated failures... ESPN continue to pay him to host a podcast that centers around the topic of, wait for it, racism. <laughs> God dang. You'll notice from the press release today that ESPN did not mention a single of Bomani Jones' accomplishments as they did for Field Yates or any other recent signing. That's because A, Jones has none, and his re-signing has nothing to do with success. See, ESPN can decline to, re decline to re-sign names like, oh, yeah, let us not forget, forget Trey Wingo, Bobby Carpenter, who now works for OutKick, and Ron Jaworski, because they do not have the deadly race card in their pocket. But Monty Jones does. He's built a career out of baseless accusations of racism. Please see the Trey Lance story. Last year, he declared white people the problem within all layers of sports and business. I guess white people are why you're... Shows all fail, right? Moreover, his online supporters use this card to protect him from any further career downfall. Jamel Hill and the Twitter bros accuse ESPN of racism when they canceled his show. Wow. Wow. Uh, effed up on so many levels, Jamel Hill had said, Bo and Pablo didn't deserve this. They have become in many ways the conscience of ESPN. There's a trend growing there, and if you... Think for a minute, you'll see it. <laughs> Citing poor viewership, ESPN decided to cancel High Noon. I mean, what do you need to see exactly? The too bad white guy, Ryan Rosillo, didn't have anti-racist Twitter at his disposal when ESPN demoted him despite his rating success. I continue to say that's their biggest loss. Rosillo has like the third or fourth biggest sports podcast in the world now. He works for The Ringer. ESPN has received no return on its decade-long investment of Bomani Jones, and it knows it never will, yet the cowardly bosses would rather pay him to do minimal work than to allow him to go elsewhere and call the company racist. But ESPN isn't the only fool. He hosts a show on ESPN thanks to his friendship with show producer Adam McKay. 
How is the show doing, you might ask? Yep, you guessed it. Record lows there, too. And that's even following John Oliver. Oh, so, and Bobby Burrack's point is, essentially, Jones has done nothing of merit to keep his job, yet here he is actually getting re-signed when it's pretty obvious why some of the real talent was let go. Trey Wingo, white guy. Uh, Bobby Carpenter, white guy. Jaws, white guy. Ryan Rosillo, white guy. Ryan Rosillo might argue that one. Sorry, Ryan, white guy. Uh, Danny Cannell, white guy. Oh, especially Danny Cannell, white guy. Um, got too woke for Will Kane, white guy. Um, the list goes on and on. Kenny Maine, Mike Golick, the legend, Mike G- Golick. Um, all these folks are gone. I mean, can you imagine how good an afternoon ESPN debate show would be or a radio type show that would have had Ryan Rosillo sitting across from Mike Golick Jr. right now? I I mean, it would be must see sports television every single day. Even if it was a radio show that was just simulcast on television, I'd watch it every single day. And I suspect everybody else would too. And I suspect the podcast numbers on something like that would be huge. No, no, not, not, not happening. But Bomani Jones will get re-signed. Now, what kind of privilege do we call this now? Just wondering, could somebody tell me, is it the same privilege that Deshaun Watson benefited from for the last two years when essentially the mainstream media completely ignored him and all his sinister massage work that he did. Is it that same kind of privilege? Just wondering. Oh, man. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.